Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, June 15th of 2017. And guess I'm going to have to be doing videos like this, and I forget what category. I guess this goes into the uh, politics catalog I'm, or playlist. I'm not sure. I really don't want to be discussing a lot of, of this. It's depressing and ups it's upsetting I think to all of us the, everything about it but I guess this is going to be another one of these discussions if you're a uh, right wing ideologue and if you positively are your only news station that uh, you want to watch is Fox News and if you think that CNN and all of the others are fake news, then I suggest you just stop watching this video. Uh, but I really don't want to be talking about these things, but there, what else is there to talk about? It's really, everything is so upsetting. Uh, I am a liberal Democrat. I have been in my entire life. I... Uh, I don't think I've ever voted for a Republican unless I flipped the switch one time by mistake. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be voting for any Republicans under any circumstances. I voted for Hillary Clinton. I did not want Hillary Clinton. I didn't want her as the candidate for the Democratic Party. Uh, but I had no choice. The choices were uh, between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, and there's no way I, that I could vote for Donald Trump or that I think anybody should have voted for Donald Trump under any circumstances. But I can understand there's people who don't like uh, don't like Hillary Clinton. Well, I don't like Hillary Clinton. Not that she's ever done anything to be sent, you know, sent to jail, sent to jail. Not that she's ever done anything Republicans spent uh, eight years trying to sabotage the presidency of uh, Obama, uh, President Obama, uh, did spend eight years, you know, I, we have uh, sessions at the uh, hearing where he was saying, you know, that, oh, he's, he's been a public service, you know, uh, working for, you know, no, he's a Republican. Uh, he spent uh, eight years doing everything he could to sabotage the presidency of President Obama. Uh, the Republicans were not a loyal opposition party. Uh, their aims were the same as really terrorist or whatever. It was to uh, hurt the United States, hurt the American people, to hurt the government, to bring down the government. So uh, uh, Sessions in his testimony, I only watched the first few minutes of it, but I saw some video clips. Uh, and from what and from what he said, you know, so I don't know if that's what he he doesn't believe, and Republicans at, right now, apparently, most of them, all of them, I guess, in Congress, uh, don't believe that. Uh, President Trump should be impeached uh, and removed from office, or they don't really think that he's, they don't like his tweeting, they don't like a lot of the stuff, but you know, oh. But uh, Sessions, when he was in the Senate, is one of the Republicans in the Senate who voted to remove uh, President Clinton from office. Let's see. President Clinton got a blowjob. Okay, yes, I understand. I understand. He lied about that, and that was under oath, so that's perjury. Okay, so he committed perjury uh, about getting a blowjob in the White House. Uh, there's nothing else that he did. Uh, that's it. Because he, you know, they were everybody was looking for something on 
for the Clintons forever. They've been investigated and never found anything criminal that they did. Obama, they were looking for anything they could on Obama. Nothing. Uh, but Sessions, when he was a United States senator, uh, made repeated statements that uh, President Clinton needed to be removed from, you know, removed from office. He needed to be he needed to be impeached, and he voted to impeach him. And now we have President Trump. <laughs> President Trump doesn't need to be removed from office. Let's see. President Clinton got a blowjob. I'm sorry. Uh, he lied under oath about whether he got a blowjob. That's perjury. President Trump lies every day. He seems to be mentally unbalanced. He's really stupid. He's committed obstruction of justice. I don't know what all. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So, now, that's <coughs> joking me up. I actually didn't intend to talk about that. As you know, I don't have scripts. <laughs> it's just whatever's going through my head here. And uh, there were, oh, that's what I was, that's how I sort of got into it. I'm a liberal Democrat. Uh, I'm opposed to violence of any kind for any reason. We don't, we should not settle things by violence in this country. I would like to, to avoid all types of conflicts with other nations, if we can. Sometimes we can't. Sometimes there are justifiable wars. Sometimes there are times when we have to use our military force, uh, not in Grenada, not in Nicaragua, not in Haiti, not in Venezuela, you know, but there are times that we have to use it. I think we had to use it actually in Afghanistan, but I don't think we had to use it in, you know, Iraq. Uh, that was just uh, something that Trump and, or not Trump, that was something that uh, Bush and Cheney wanted to do. So anyway, I'm opposed to violence of any sort for any, any reason. But I do understand that sometimes we do have to use it. But we should never use it. We shouldn't use it, uh, that type of language, the type of language that President Trump has used against President uh, Obama uh, and against other people. We shouldn't be using it back and forth. And the Republicans' the establishment, and especially the, you don't hear much about the <clears throat> Tea Party anymore. It kind of got taken over by the Trumpers. But back then, they, I had a lot of Republican friends who, positively objected to compromise no compromise on you know and as in many of these videos in the past and in blog entries that I made that's actually the way our system of government was is set up and that's why it worked as long as it did work I'm not sure it's going to work and be working much longer now because of the way the Republicans have muddied the waters and and destroyed things and obstructed and uh, not been a loyal opposition party. And those friends of mine that I, we would be just trying to discuss something and it got, of course, where I, you couldn't discuss it, I couldn't discuss it with them. Because if I would say something, uh, they'd say, where did you get that? And I, I wouldn't even, you know, uh, it was on television, you know. Where? Was it on CNN? Yeah, it might have been on CNN. You know, I that, I watched CNN. I watched Fox News a little bit. I watched MSNB, uh, BBC, you know, the uh, 
British Broadcasting Corporation, not just watched it, but listened. I listened since I was in grade school. I listened to the British Broadcasting Corporation. You used to have to listen to it on shortwave radio. Now you can get it on television, and you can get it on you know on the internet, and you can get it on national public radio, FM radio here in the United States, the BBC. You know, so I mean, I listened to a lot of sources, but it was like. Well, you got that, so, you know, ignore, you know, ignore that. You got it from CNN, we don't, you know, we just write that off. So, yesterday there were three mass shootings in the United States, actually maybe more. Uh, I think there was three mass shootings in the United States. And I guess mass shootings, the definition of it or the the way it's defined or whatever, I think is three or more people shot in an incident. That's a mass shooting. So there was at least three mass shootings yesterday in the United States. One being in Virginia at uh, the ball baseball field or whatever. Now, I've, I've been known to make a mistake before, whatever. When this first started p- popping up and everything, one, the police officers there, Capitol Police, did a fantastic job, you know. There was, I guess, just two of them, I, I guess, at that uh, event, and you know they had sidearms against a guy with some type of semi-automatic weapon, probably with clips that hold 60 rounds or 80 rounds of ammo. We haven't heard all those details yet, and they're, you know, shooting. Back at him, he has a rifle with, you know, a lot of rounds of ammunition, and they're firing back with their uh, pistol with 10, 12 rounds. Could have been a 9 millimeter. I'm not sure what the Capitol Police carry. Could have been more, but of course they had some clips, I'm sure. But let me tell you, here's something I was wrong on. Uh, when all this is coming out little bits of information and whatever, and they said uh, that uh, Scalise, Scalise, whatever his name is, and he's majority whip, Republican majority whip, or was it something below whip? I forget. But, and they said his security detail was there. And the first thing, and I'm, I, I'm now, now I see I was wrong about what, but my first thing was, okay, you know, the President of the United States uh, has to have security, the Vice President has to have security, uh, the Speaker of the House has to have security, and I'm the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Defense, you know, the Secretary of the Treasury, the Secretary of the State, and but why does the third ranking uh, member ha- have a security detail? Okay, I was wrong because w- the way this all played out, thank God that he was there. If he hadn't have been there, apparently there wouldn't have been any. Although, how could you be a patrol officer in that area? I mean, they, they play baseball there, you know. What, I mean, when I was patrolling, wherever I was patrolling, I knew what was going on. And if I, you know, of course I don't know how many police officers they have in Alexandria. I don't know how many officers they have, Whether, but it would seem to me that if you have, I hate VIP, if you have VIPs someplace or any, you know, you know what the situation is, and, and you would have some officers, you know, there. You would have them patrolling. You'd have them uh, pull, in, you know, pull in there and eat your. If you're eating donuts or whatever, pull in there and be in your car eating, you know, eating donuts. It just seemed. I don't know, but anyway, thank God he does have a did have a security detail, I guess it was two people with him, and thank God he was at there, there would have been nobody 
apparently there at the park, no law enforcement there at the park. And as everybody is saying, Republicans especially, of course, are saying, uh, it would have been a killing field with, with a semi-automatic rifle and a whole bunch of ammunition. And two, what I just was hearing, one of the Republican congressmen or whatever was describing, that I guess it's a very professional, he was acting like it was a professional baseball field. And two, I was thinking it was just like a, I used to have a, Security Patrol Service, and one of the places that I uh, patrolled was a little league. They had a whole bunch of uh, ball fields there in the area. Uh, and I patrolled that, the women's auxiliary or support group would have paid for me to patrol at it. Uh, but uh, Anyway, this place had regular uh, dugouts uh, down in the ground and whatever. And so this congressman was saying he he was in the the batting cage, I think it was, or the pitching cage outside. Everybody else was inside, and it was fenced in. And so all their, you know, so this, this would have been, I thought it was like a little league field, you know, no fences around it and, uh, so I think the local police could have done of course I don't know what goes on in Alec you know that's right Washington D.C. Uh, and what, everything is, there's, there's a lot going on there but it seemed to me like and it doesn't seem to me like the before you go on patrol that day that you have to be told by the sergeant by the way, the Democrats are going to be practicing at such and such a field, and the Republicans such and so. Hang out in that area if you can, or take your break there. Or it doesn't seem like if if you're patrolling your area, you know your area, you work in that, you know what's going on, and you should just be places, try to be places where there may where you may be needed. But anyway, let's not blame let's not blame the police. But let's say that those uh, everybody is giving those two officers there from the Capitol Police, a great deal of credit. Uh, and both of them were shot, by the way. Uh, so we had this that shooting, and it seems like news media and everything, everybody was concentrating on, on that, and these other two shooting situations not getting much attention. And there'll probably be a mass shooting today in the United States, maybe a couple. Uh, by the way, I am not, I used to be a member when I was young of the National Rifle Association, but I actually stopped, I didn't cancel my members. You know, I was a member for years. I loved the American Rifleman reading it. And, But when they went into this crazy mode of the government is trying to take our guns away from us, and when they were having, you know, you've got to defend your right to carry arms and, you know, donate money, give us money. We need more money to keep them from taking our guns when, when they went in. And when they were doing the, I've mentioned this in another video, more than one video probably, when they started doing the crazy stuff of, uh, you know, oh, Another citizen defended themself, you know, you know, I use Grandma Moses or somebody as an example, you know, made up, you know, a thing of uh, a grandma with uh, ten little girls or whatever, she's taking care of ten little girls and three murderous rapists come out there and say, Grandma, we're going to rape your little girls, you know. And Grandma gets out her assault rifle, or her shotgun, double barrel shotgun, and <laughs> you know, and she drives them off or kills them all or whatever. And that was the kind of stories that were in that started putting in the national, uh, into American. Uh, can't remember the name, but I just mentioned it to you, American Rifleman. That's the kind of stories. And I remember this was years ago, back in the '60s, probably whenever they started the craziness about the, you know, you have to 
protect you. They're going to take your guns away from you. They haven't taken the fucking guns away yet, have they? <laughs> Obama didn't take them away. Uh, Clinton didn't take them away. By the way, I mentioned that too several times. I just happen, I've only been to two gun shows in my life. I just happened to be at a gun show the day that, that uh, Clinton's gun control regulations where they're going to, he's taking our guns away. I happened to be at the gun show that day. <sighs> he didn't take, you know, there was, that wasn't any gun. The only thing, and which was good, the assault rifle ban, there was no fucking assault rifle ban. It was if, if an uh, assault rifle that had a bannet lug on it and a flash guard or something, those couldn't be sold. The tables were filled. They had it announced over the public. The assault ban has just gone into effect. But we have, and then people were running over there buying up assault, right? You know, the only thing which helped, might have helped a little bit was, well, really, that didn't either. He, they did, after, we can't get an assault ban. You can't get a weapons ban in the United States. You know, hey, I grew up as a, as a kid playing before television, you know. Play cowboys and Indians. Well, I had a cap gun. I had a lot of cap guns, water guns when it was hot weather. Uh, grew up with it, you know. Went to the movies twice a week, you know. Uh, John Wayne and all those western movies, television, you know. Hop along, Cassidy and Cisco Kid. I mean, you know, I'm American man. I grew up with that. You're not going to take our guns away. But sorry, I didn't catch that. I did not say anything about taking guns away. I swear to God. Honest. I swear to God, I didn't say a word about taking guns away. How the fuck do I cancel this thing? Please don't record that. Uh, so, oh, there was the ban or the restriction on clips that hold more than, I'm sorry, you know. Like I said, I'm not anti-gun. I, and I carried a gun for, you know, I didn't carry a gun when I was a welder. I didn't carry a gun when I was building trucks. I didn't carry a gun when I was building railroad cars. I didn't carry a gun when I worked at the post office. I didn't carry a gun when I worked at Radio Shack. But for over 30 years, I had to carry a gun at work every day. I was also a reserve officer with a police department. And the small police department, in the policies or statements, wanted us to be armed at all times, even when I wasn't working. Uh, for 10 years or so, I had a full county commission with Cass County. Missouri, uh, and I don't know if I was supposed to be carrying the weapon at all times, but I, it was a full commission. Even their reserve officers and horse patrol and whatever, even they didn't have full commissions or whatever. So I'm not anti-gun, but nobody needs, except the military, uh, nobody needs clips that hold 20 rounds of ammo, 60 rounds of ammo, and now I've come to the position, I mean, I used to own a few rifles. I, the rifles though I owned when I was a member of the NRA was, you know, German Mauser, Springfield, you know, 03, I forget what else. I didn't own any assault rifles. Uh, but uh, you don't need so anyway, the ban was the Clinton ban, yeah. And I forget what the number. I think it was ten rounds. Ten rounds was the most at a clip. But okay, I'm at the gun show. The ban that went into effect that because that was because it just you're not going to get anti-gun legislation passed. The only ones who could do it would be the Republicans, and of course they would never do it. Uh, and even they probably couldn't do it. But they, 
the, the band was on new clips. Uh, and when I was at this gun show, the, the tables, honest to God, it's a good thing they didn't, you know, collapse from the weight. There, because there was, because of, especially because of like AK-47s and all those, there was clips, warehouse full of old clips. I mean, they were not used. They were, you know, had been manufactured or whatever. You could get all the big clips that you wanted. Those were not banned. So stop this thing of, oh, Clinton tried to take her guns away. Oh, Obama, you know. For eight years, uh, the gun lobby went on, you know. Obama is taking our guns away. He didn't take any guns away. I would like to have seen if, if he could have done it. I would have liked to have seen uh, a legitimate ban. I don't think that we need to be. I understand. You know, you want to. I was trying. I started. Of course, I think I only had three rifles. I started. I wanted to have a, a gun collection, a rifle collection. You know, because. A lot of those are, are works of art. I mean, the fantastic wood. I mean, not these cheap, you know, AK-47 uh, assault rifles that are made by they're made by the Chinese or the Russians or whatever, stamped out, you know. But a lot of them, are, you know, rifles. Uh, I had an M1 when I was for four years when I was in high school. I went to an R. Uh, Catholic military high school for four years. We were in uniform all the time. I had my own personal M and unfortunately I didn't have a firing pin in it. But uh, I never considered that. I like bold action actually but I, I wanted, I would love to have had a collection of uh, rifles. Fantastic wood machinery. You know, that's another thing. You know, they're machined it's beautiful. A lot of the uh, handguns that I had over the years, I had a Smith and West Smith and Wesson uh, Outdoorsman, uh, a thirty-eight, but on a forty-four frame, and beautiful. I had beautiful grips on it. I wish I still had that. That was a beautiful gun. I had a lot of beautiful guns. Work. They were work guns. Be carried at work, but. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we had these three mass shootings, and of course they're making a big deal out, which they should, I mean it's newsworthy, out of the uh, shooting. But uh, here you have a right-wing site. You know, we have, at, in Congress yesterday, they uh, the, the, the leader... House leader and the uh, minority leader and other people, you know, got up and they said we should work together. We're all together. This is aimed not at just you know, but then you have a right wing hate site. I call it a hate site, redstate.com, and their headline is uh, as wished for by deranged deranged left. Republican blood has been spilled. That's not constructive. That's not helpful, uh, and that does not help with the you know with the situation. So, two. What we need to remember is that back a few years ago, and I think that was during was that during Obama or was that during uh, Clinton. Or was it during Bush? No, it was... It was okay, I can't remember. I know the Republicans were in charge of Congress, though. So. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the FBI or if it was Homeland Security. No, I think it was an FBI study or something that came out. And they, they said, you know, they, this had gone on for... A, a year or numerous years of study and pulling information together, whatever, and they said, because uh, it's after 9 11, because you know, I forget now the numbers, but it was something like, you know, well, 
the FBI has uh, 3,000 FBI agents working full-time on anti-terrorism, uh, you know, Muslim anti-terrorism uh, situations, studying those and, and working. And uh, our study here shows that what we need to be concerned about is, you know, you want to be concerned about that naturally. But what we really need to be concerned about is local, homegrown terrorism. And we need to be worried about right-wing uh, sites such as the Klan. I'm not even sure they would use right-wing, but they, you know, we need to be worried about the Klan and uh, groups like that here in the United States. That is where the real danger, that's where there has been a spike in hate, been a spike in violence, and the numbers and everything point that this is where we need. And we only have uh, 10 or 15 FBI agents who work in that field, in that office, or whatever. And the Republicans went fucking crazy. That's in a, it probably was during Obama. I, anyway, I wish I could remember. I should have looked it up. But the Republicans went crazy. That's an attack upon the Republican Party. That's an attack on Fox News. That's they're going to try, they're going to put us into internment camps. They're going to the government has, you know, internment camps that they're going to put, you know, uh, the Republicans in. And this is an and the FBI should not be investigating the. Of course, they don't say the FBI shouldn't be investigating the Klan, or the FBI shouldn't be invading these. Uh, people who say that they're not citizens, that the federal government has no control, they've shot a bunch of cops, you know, and stuff, and people. They don't say, you know, but they say, you know, it shouldn't be investigating the, the right wing, shouldn't be investigating, uh, you know, Republicans or whatever. Uh, shouldn't be investigating religion, you know, Branch Davidian or whatever, you know. Uh, and so... Anyway, the FBI was saying, well, we needed to, you know, need money from Congress to either, you know, get more FBI agents working in this branch where we have 15 working on it, or we need to take some of the thousands that are working uh, on international terrorism, you know, and put them in over here. And the Republicans, one, canceled the report. That report was not released to the news media or to the public, of course, you know, the way our system leaks, I'm sure, probably it was printed by the Washington Post or somebody, but it was canceled. They were they were not allowed to issue that report and send it around to maybe a local police, you know, make it available as an FBI, you know, thing to go out to local police departments and highway patrols and uh, stuff like that. And not only that, the Republicans demanded that FBI agents be taken out of that department that had like 10 or 15 working that they'd be taking off of that get out of there, get them out of there and it went back that there was one person working in that agency or that section was taken out and eventually I, I believe I read that just recently that he quit <laughs> he just washed his hand and uh, went someplace else. He's probably director of security at some place, making more money than he made as an FBI agent. So, um, too many. Oh, that's it. You know, that's. I'm not sure if I got that across. Maybe I'm coming back and repeating myself again. Oh, I'm in. I understand wanting to collect guns. I understand wanting to shoot guns for target practice. Uh, I understand hunting. I'm not a big... I mean, like, Dad took me hunting a few times, but it was like, you know, with my twenty two went squirrel hunting. Can anybody hit a squirrel with a twenty two? I couldn't. I know we went pheasant hunting. I don't think I... I didn't, you know... But, uh, so I can understand hunting, especially if you live in, you know... Montana or someplace or I guess here in I'm in Texas here in Texas we've got uh, 
Texas just passed a thing where you can hunt hogs or whatever from an air balloon because there's so many hogs, wild hogs, and they're kind of dangerous, I guess. I haven't seen any running up the streets down the streets of Fort Worth, Texas yet, but uh, so I can understand hunting. But I'm sorry. Uh, Americans do not need to have military weapons and you don't need to have clips uh, that hold, you know, X number of rounds. I'd say, I'd say maybe 20, over 20 rounds. 20 rounds would be too much, man. The last, uh, my Smith & Wesson, the last I carried Smith & Wesson uh, 40 caliber or whatever, uh, that had the clip held 11 rounds so I put 11 rounds in it and I'd chamber one and then I'd put it drop the clip put another round in it put the clip back in so I had 12 rounds in my gun and uh, then I had a couple other clips on my belt uh, by the way I was working in really really bad neighborhoods uh, I probably shouldn't even go here because this is going to sound bad, but but it's on my mind, and when I got something on my mind, my God, I have no governor up there to. Unlike, well, I guess Trump and I are Trump's seventy-one today, I believe. I'm seventy-six or seventy-seven. I was born nineteen forty-one. Subtract forty-one from what year is this? 2017. So anyway, um, he doesn't have any governor. <laughs> he doesn't have anything. I don't need it. Well, I probably should. everybody needs to have a control. You know, do not engage mouth until brain is engaged or something. But if you're president of the United States, you really need to have some control. I don't. Uh, there again, I'm against violence. Uh, fantastic for these Capitol Police officers that they, they did a great job that worked out it could have been so much worse uh, the first hospital I worked at St. Joseph Hospital in Kansas City, Missouri we had a bare minimum of security people, there was 10 officers not 10 on a shift that was the worst part of Kansas City, Missouri at the time it was right after race rioting had been taking place. Uh, there were uh, SAC-20, I believe they were called, a black militant group in the neighborhood who went around with berets on and uh, were very militant. And so we had 10 security officers. So I worked, I started out working the day shift and there were uh, three of us on duty on the day shift second shift had uh, three officers on duty midnight shift had two officers on duty um, on the second shift at 9.15 p.m. Uh, in the Wabash parking lot uh, two guys came up to Dan Stagel and asked him if that was the parking lot for St. Joe Hospital. He said it was and one guy sprayed him with mace and the other shot him. And then they wrestled with him until he collapsed and then they took his gun and took off. Uh, Dan pulled through but he was in the intensive care unit for the longest, longest time. Just a miracle that he pulled through. He just was really lucky that Normally the only doctor that that hospital at that time of night would have been the ER doctor, but there was a couple that one doctor came in to deliver a baby, another doctor came in because he was uh, feeling sick and he came to pick up some medication for himself, so they had three doctors, uh, and he pulled through. So I went to the second shift and took his place, and I worked on the second shift uh, with, with the officers. I worked with... Uh, uh, Anyway, I worked on the second shift, 
and then I went to the midnight shift then I went back to the day shift and then when I went back to the day shift um, oh my god another security officer was shot John Gallegas that was it John Gallegas was shot in the Wabash parking lot at 9.15 p.m. and uh, he managed to shoot the they both you know the uh, the guy who shot John John was able to shoot him but John when he hit the ground was dead the other the guy who shot John managed to jump a fence and he collapsed on the next street the police got him but uh, let's take John Gillick's uh, you know, killed in the line of duty. He got the guy who, you know, the bad guy. The bad guy got him, though, too. Uh, something which, <laughs> I, like I said, I worked with uh, John Gallegas. Uh, and I was always been big into photography. And this is before digital photography, but... Uh, John wanted a picture taken of him in his uniform, so I went out to the parking lot uh, when John was out there and took my camera out, and really it was a no-no. <laughs> I'm surprised I did it, but I said, John, you know, look to take your gun out. And so John pulled his gun out, and I took a picture of him, two or three pictures of him with his gun drawn, and then he holstered it, of course. Uh, that spot where I took a picture of John was just a few feet from where he saw the bad guy breaking into the car and where the bad guy saw him and where they shot each other and where he fell and where I came in uh, to work and John's blood was on the ground there in the parking lot and John's uh, uniform and what have you was in a plastic bag there to be picked up by the crime lab people um, and his activity sheet was filled out uh, up to you know 21 15 hours or whatever uh, when he uh, couldn't add any more to his activity log after that yes if you're a police officer or you're studying law enforcement at community college and everything I understand uh, the uniform and that should have been in a paper bag not a plastic bag um, I was not responsible for that that's telling you what I found when I came in um, So I had take, taken pictures of, of John and uh, by the way when the night that John was killed he, I, I was working day shift and he came in to relieve me and I was uh, shining my shoes in the office no I wasn't shining my shoes I was in the office and John was getting ready to transfer the keys of, you know give him the keys he was going to go on duty and everything and he, he said Jim you you weren't in the military were you and I said nope and uh, he said I can't believe somebody and I forget how old I was you know I was a young guy then I thought I was old but I was a young guy and uh, he said I can't believe somebody your age and you don't know how to shine your shoes and we had a kit there in fact I had bought the kit donated because the hospital the nuns were uh, ran the hospital Catholic hospital and they didn't spend any money for, that they didn't have to they really didn't want to spend money on security but like I said it was a, the worst neighborhood in Kansas City at that time there had been race rioting people they had a one wing of the hospital roster hall was filled with retired nuns and with uh, it was like a nurse place of retired nuns and a place for a nursing home for nuns and whatever six floors of it and those <laughs> they were able to look out the window and 
see the rioters and seeing cars being set on fire and overturned and what have you. So they did have to get security, but they didn't want any more than they had, and they didn't want to spend any money. And they sure didn't. They positively did not want to spend any money for training or getting us any equipment or anything that they had, and let they, you know, that they didn't have to be. They wanted to send money to their mother house. They wanted to send money to the uh, St. Kansas City St. Joseph Diocese. They wanted to send money to the Holy Father, or Holy Father wanted. They wanted to, they didn't want to spend any money. So anyway, I had purchased a uh, shoe sign kit for the security officer there. So John said, let me show you. And so he, he shined my shoes for me before I went home. And then a few hours later, I got a call at home that John had, you know, been shot and killed. So, um, when I came into work the next morning, I won't go into that, but I, because I went into that in another video, uh, but I, when I came in the, the next day, uh, it was business as usual. I did the same things, you know, uh, same things I did. Everything was business as usual. Um. Then the hospital told the family of, you know, John Gallegas that uh, they were going to put a plaque up uh, for him. And uh, the plaque they were going to put up, there'd be a place for a picture of John. And then the family wanted a picture of him in his uniform. I think you can see where this is going. And then the fam one of the security officers said, Jim Howard, the security officer out that's out there in, in the Wabash parking lot right now, He's got pictures of, uh, you know, John. And so when the family was leaving, they came over. And I said, yeah, I've got the pictures of him. And they said, well, we'd like to. And I, I was thinking, okay, I'll, I'll print them and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get them to you. You can pick them up tomorrow, the next day or whatever, you know. I'll get them to you. And I was thinking, oh, my God, the only pictures I have are John, you know with his gun drawn, that'd be a no-no, you know, for the, uh, so anyway, they came and picked up those pictures, and they loved them, of course, and, okay, the plaque never went up at St. Joe Hospital in downtown, Can you know, in 31st and Prospect in Kansas City, Missouri, if you're familiar now with Kansas City, Missouri, or you're familiar with it, the last, you know, this is like the 1970s, yeah, right in the 1970s, right after that, the hospital moved out to the suburbs to an all-white area. Um, so, but anyway, the, the hospital told the family, uh, uh, we're not going to put the plaque up here, you know. We're going to wait till we move to our new fancy hospital out there. We're going to put it up out there. So the hospital moved out there. They never put the plaque up. Ever. They didn't want to put it up down there in the in the neighborhood, the ghetto. And they didn't want to put it up out there because they didn't want to advertise that, uh, you know, that it was unsafe at the hospital. That, that's, an employee, a security officer, was killed in the line of duty, so it never went up out there. So much for none. So, uh, uh, I had a point for that. Anyway, uh, Critical condition, you know, shot in the hip, uh, we saw that. But then, I forget where it was, I was reading uh, uh, that bullet there went in and they went through some vital organ, you know, hit some vital organs or whatever, so he's in now critical condition. I think at first the hospital said, somebody reported it being a, that he was in stable condition. That's one thing I've noticed about these uh, shootings, fires, car wrecks, or whatever. Uh, especially, I think, with a shooting type situation or whatever, 
uh, they'll say, yeah, it'd be a police officer or something, they'll say, uh, well, you know, not critical, you know, he's going to... He's going to survive, and then you see later, like Dallas, and I'm not sure if it's Fort Worth or whatever, you see a, re a report later on, and the officer's, you know, in a wheelchair or has to go through, you know, months or years of uh, training to be able to walk. And, all. and so that when they say, what they're talking about is, okay, the person's not going to die. Some of these people, like, uh, it's this one police officer, uh, they said, was shot in the chest. And when I saw the news, when the, this, uh, the congressman here was shot in the hip or whatever, what was the... Uh, the movie. Oh, where the the guy was shot in the buttocks, and he showed you know showed President Johnson his life is like a box of cookies, and he showed you know or a box of candy or something or other. So when I so I'm shot in the hip, but then I had, so. Oh yeah, this is something that I wanted to, and I think it's here, because of working security at one hospital that I worked at. I was a fire marshal, and I did the, I did a weekly fire alarm test. It was not a fire drill. Then I also did the fire drills and things like that. And all of the security officers there were. You know, we were security officers, we were safety officers, we did the OSHA inspections. Uh, I did new, as a supervisor on the day shift, I did uh, new employee orientation. Well, not the entire, you know, for new, part of it, you know, like uh, what the codes mean when you hear that over the public address system, what the uh, parking situation, you know, where you can park and how you get a parking sticker and uh, fire, you know, emergency doctor read what that means, what you're expected to do, and a whole bunch of stuff like that. But even when I was working, the very beginning when I was working full-time hospital security, and then I was working part-time contract security, even when I was just sent out to some places, you know, hey, you're the night watchman, go out to this factory, we know you have never been there before, but go out there on, you know, on the midnight shift or whatever. When you're a security officer and you go out there, you're you know, you're not just there to prevent uh, an armed robbery or a, a rape or an abduction or uh, something like that. When you go out there, you're supposed to be looking and noticing and observing everything. And, you know, you're looking at, you know, are there fire, you know, Hazards are there uh, safety hazards? Is there carpeting that's ripped up someplace where somebody's going to catch their shoe on it and fall? Are there treads on the? I mean, you, you're looking for a, a million things. And uh, so this, oh man, tragic uh, fire. I think it's twenty. It was a twenty-seven floors. Uh, oh. Fires are bad. Um, but then I just saw, because I've been, I'm interested in that, you know, because of my past experience. And I saw uh, they had a, a guy who was showing, I guess they have a building, other, more than one, they have another building that's identical to this one someplace. Same way it was built and everything. Well, let me go back before that. Uh, people are saying here this building that caught fire that fire extinguishers hadn't been checked in a year or more. You know, they're supposed to be signed off on 
when you wherever you go you go to a shopping center you go to a hospital in the, in the United States but I'm sure they have their regulations in other countries too you go to a shopping center you go to a hospital you go to a movie theater or whatever there are fire exits they have to be marked those lights have to be lit if they burn out somebody needs to, you know security or whoever needs to make sure they get taken care of the fire extinguishers it may be plan operations that uh, maintenance or somebody who actually uh, makes sure they're, that they're maybe they sign off otherwise usually in hospitals I hope we always signed off on one hospital I worked at each uh, security shift was responsible for a part of the hospital and we checked every fire extinguisher in the hospital as a supervisor I was checking the stand pipes and in addition you know uh, but they had, they were saying that some of these were had not fire extinguishers had but not been checked for years and signed off on you know signed off on and they needed to be recharged and just on and on but then uh, I was uh, when it was it was a secondary I worked hospital security full time but I also worked contract security for a while and I was sent out to a hospital medical building. Now security at the hospital did not take care of that medical building. A contract company took care of that. And I went out there, so I, I mentioned this before I remember in a video, but anyway, I went out there and uh, the security officer who was working there showed me around and then told me what needed to be done and here's the desk and here's the log book and all that type of stuff and then he said okay well now it's uh, you know 5 p.m. or whatever we need to go over and we need to chain up these doors and I, I said uh, these are fire exits and he said yeah we uh, when just about everybody's out of the building they, uh, the few that are left you know they know they need to go out the front door and I said you can't chain fire exit yeah you know, the the uh, you know the companies you know security company they, they say we have to I, say, I don't care what they say well the you know the client wants us to, that's what they pay it you know I, no no so I was supposed to come back the next day I mentioned this in another video I came back the next morning and there was a female security officer at the desk she had an arrogant smug look on her face or whatever and normally you come in the door and the person is going even though if you've never been there if a, the company sends you out there <laughs> You know, well, somebody will show you. You know, when you get there, the person says, I, I, "They just sent me out here. My, this is my first night to. I don't know anything about this place. Here's the book. Here's the keys. You know, or whatever." But anyway, she, I showed up and she didn't leave. She was just still sitting behind the desk, and had this. I thought something's going on. I totally forgot about the. You know, I should have known. And then she, phone rings. Yep, he's here. Uh, you know, security uh, manager, the guy that ran the company, he wants to talk to you. So, gives me the phone, you know. He says, Oh, I understand that you said you couldn't chain up those doors there at 5 p.m. or whatever. Those need to be chained up. I said, No, I'm not chaining up fire. Uh, but yeah, we want them chained up. They have to be chained up. And I said, No, I'm not chaining up fire exits. It's, it's against the law. It's uh, dangerous. It's against uh, fire regulations. Uh, you know, he says, but the client wants it. I don't care what the client wants. It's against the law. I'm not doing it. If you want to take the risk of being found guilty of, you know, negligent manslaughter, if you want to be sued, if you, <laughs> I said, I'm not doing it. So he says, oh, well, okay, we'll find you another assignment. But anyway, so uh, I uh, was watching BBC, I think it was, news, I believe, maybe it was Sky News, and they showed the, uh, a building that's identical, and, they, and there was one, now of course there was 140 apartments in this building, but there was one fire exit, I mean there was one fire stairwell, one. My God, one, you know, now I'm not sure the 
all the work that I did, you know, even seemed like the security, even the contract security. Those were usually large, you know, really large office buildings or like hospitals or whatever. <laughs> hospitals had, my God, I don't know how many fire, you know, stairwells or whatever, but, and so I'm living in an apartment now, but this is, you know, two stories and and each one has, a, you know, an exit out the door to write. But that uh, doesn't seem to me right. One fire stairwell to exit a building. 140 apartments, uh, three, four, five people per apartment. I don't, to me, it seems like at least you should have two stairwells. And of course, I'm used to working, I was used to working in hospital security where, my God, you know, you know how hospitals are. You have probably gone to hospitals where you have lines, you know, and it's to follow. You have to follow to get to, you know, follow this and you'll get to x-ray or follow the yellow line to x-ray or whatever. And two, some of those hospitals that I worked at, and I didn't work at the largest necessarily. There were some that were bigger, a few, very few. And I worked at some really small ones. I mean, even the small ones had multiple, you know, uh, stairwells. Uh, but some of the hospitals that you work at, if you're trying to get to some place and you see an employee, how do I get to uh, the cardio department or how do I get to the cafeteria? You know, well, they probably know where the cafeteria, you know. But, uh, you know, you stop an employee and they say, you know, I don't know. All I know is I park out here in this parking garage here and I come in this way here into this section and that. I don't know how to get to, you know, that's how big the pit. So I don't know, maybe one stairwell. I don't think I would want to live in an apartment building that only had one. You know, two, I've, I've been wanting to move to the Washington, D.C. area, by the way. Well, first I wanted to go to Florida, Titusville, in fact. But I got my oldest daughter is uh, lives in Washington, D.C., and I've got a lot of medical problems really now, and I'm getting old, and my ex-wife's got a lot of medical problems more than I do. And I think my oldest daughter would like to have us there so she could kind of I don't think she's going to want to be worrying about us, and I don't think she'd want, be, you know, here and be thinking when something happens and things happen, you know, that she's going to have to fly here to think she'd kind of like to, and think, you know, so she'd like to get it. And I, so for that reason, I'd like to go to the Washington, D.C. area. Two, I'd like to make videos, walking and talking videos and other videos. I mentioned that in a video a while back uh, in the Washington, D.C. area. For last year, I think it was, for the first time, I, that's the first time I ever went to the northeast of the United States. First time I've ever been to Washington, D.C. And as you can tell, I'm a history buff, uh, news junkie, uh, interested in politics and that kind of stuff. So for the first time, I went for two weeks to and stayed with my daughter and her husband and they showed me a great time, took me around Washington DC and I was there for two weeks. We, I couldn't see everything that I wanted to see in two weeks. But uh, So I'd like to go there and I've, I could think I could make some fantastic videos. Uh, of course I think if you have a talent and ability and whatever, I'm in Fort Worth, I think if, if I had talent and ability and storytelling and uh, I think I could make fantastic videos here or anywhere but it'd be since I have no talent and no ability I think I could make some interesting videos in Washington DC you know this has been a long video and if you're with me I should put something in yeah, I'll trust you. If you watch this video all the way to the end, I'm going to, I am a ordained minister, so I am going to give you a blessing. 
if you watch this video all the way to the end. So I give you my blessing. I guess that was a cross. So if you're Jewish, I don't know. I don't know how to I just give you a, if you're a Muslim or something. I, I don't know. I'll just give you prosper. Let's see. What was the live long and prosper? I can't. Ouch, that hurts. Anyway, thank you very much. Look, if you made it to the end, let me. Uh, oh, what do we have here? Ouchie, that's current, by the way. I can't see what the top of my head looks like, so. Looks like it has healed right here. This is scabbed over, which they didn't really want to happen. So I'm going to wait till the scab comes off and then put the ointment back on or whatever. Isn't that gross looking? Yep. If you've been watching my videos, you know the entire story. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.